Trauma remains the leading cause of death for individuals up to the age of 45. As anesthesiologists, we play an essential part in the resuscitation of trauma victims. Dr. Atul Gawande, in his book, The Checklist Manifesto, How to Get Things Right, emphasizes the following about checklists. They provide reminders of only the most critical and important steps, the ones that even highly skilled professional using them could miss. Good checklists are, above all, practical. In 2013, an article titled A Checklist for Trauma and Emergency Anesthesia was published in Anesthesia and Analgesia Journal. This checklist reflects the latest evidence-based advances in resuscitation of the trauma patient. We decided to adapt this trauma checklist into an applicable medical cognitive aid. The Rider Cognitive Aid Checklist for Trauma Anesthesia is a letter-sized, full-color document consisting of two separate pages. The first page is organized in two major sections, numbered 1 and 2. Section 1, the essential steps to be performed before patient arrival to the hospital are warming the operating room to 25 degrees Celsius, 77 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, having a rapid infuser available, preparing a fluid warmer on the IV line, performing routine anesthesia machine check, verifying immediate availability of essential airway equipment, and emergency medications, and confirming the blood bank that six units O packed red blood cells, six units AB, FFP, or fresh frozen plasma, and six units of random donor platelets are readily available. In section two, the essential steps to be performed on patient arrival to the hospital are identifying the patient for emergency and or trauma surgery, sending type and cross sample and activating the massive transfusion protocol, obtaining vascular access, Placing standard monitors, oxygen saturation probe, blood pressure cuff, electrocardiogram leads, and while surgeons prep and drape, pre-oxygenating the patient. The second page has three major sections, number three, four, and five. Section three starts with medication options for rapid sequence induction, followed by confirmation of orotracheal intubation and immediate communication with surgeons to start. Section 4 illustrates the essential steps to be performed during resuscitation of the patient. Sending baseline labs, following trends in mean arterial pressure, tracking urine output to 0.5 to 1 milliliter per kilogram per hour, transfusion of PBRVCs and FFP in 1 to 1 ratio, considering the use of transoxemic acid, calcium chloride, and vasopressin, and the appropriate antibiotic therapy. In case of traumatic brain injury, the goals are to maintain systolic blood pressure greater than 90 to 100 millimeters of mercury, oxygen saturation greater than 90 percent, and a PCO2 between 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury. Section 5 corresponds to the essential steps to be performed for the post-operative plan, including contacting the intensive care unit and initiating low lung volume ventilation with tidal volumes of 6 milliliters per kilogram ideal body weight. We hope that by sharing the writer cognitive aid with the global medical community, we can facilitate the implementation of the trauma and emergency checklist, improve clinical outcomes, encourage the design and development of other tailored medical cognitive aids. Future research should be focused on ensuring successful implementation strategies and customization of this tool, which could potentially benefit critically ill patients.